So if you're like me, then you want to ask Game Freak the same thing. Where are our Diamond and Pearl remakes? Pokemon, let's go Pikachu! After many years of wishful thinking, we Pokemon fans finally have a fantasy come true. Main series core games for a home console, and Nintendo and Game Freak decided to play it safe. These new games are essentially remakes of the original Pokemon games, red, blue, mostly yellow. In the original Pokemon Yellow, you would have a Pikachu that follows you around like it followed around Ash in the anime. In this one, depending on which version you have, you have a Pikachu or an Eevee that either rests on your shoulder or rests on your head, and it's your partner in this game. And the story is the same as the original Red, Blue, and Yellow. It is the classic Pokemon story. You're a young trainer just starting out. You're from Pallet Town in the Kanto region, and you go on your quest to catch them all, fighting gyms so you can get badges, fighting Team Rocket, and eventually going up against the Elite Four. No real big changes to the story here. Of course, this being a home console game, well, kind of a home console game, the Switch is, you know, both a portable system and a home console system. But since this is a home system console game, the graphics, oh yeah. They're amazing. The Kanto region has never looked better, just like I said about the Hoenn region in Alpha Sapphire. But this is the second remake of Red and Blue since we had Fire Red and Leaf Green for the Game Boy Advance. I had Fire Red version. But now the Kanto region is just absolutely gorgeous and so alive. I love it. And yeah, like every Pokemon game before it, this game is completely addicting and it's awesome and fun. However, I do have some small complaints. There are some things about this game I don't like. Like this partner Pikachu, for example. You have this option where you can play with this Pikachu, you can pet it and stuff and feed it berries, which is like, you know, Pokemon and me in X and Y or the Pokemon Refresh in Sun and Moon. But in those games, you could do that with any Pokemon in your party. So there was variety there and I liked it. You could really be friends with any Pokemon you wanted. In this game, only your partner Pikachu. What? Come on! I used my partner Pikachu in battle for like the first part of the game and then I got stronger Pokemon and I stopped using Pikachu because I got a Magneton instead. That really wrecks house. So can I feed my Magneton some berries? Can I pet it on its weird metal head with the magnets and everything and the screw on its head? No, it's a bummer. Because my party in this game is awesome. Because you don't get one of the Kanto starters like you would think, like Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur. You don't get any of those, at least not in the beginning of this game. You get your partner Pikachu or Eevee. And I set Pikachu aside and in the end I ended up with the most badass Kanto team I think ever assembled. Rapidash, Vileplume, Gengar, Dugong, Magneton, and Golem. I traded with my buddy Kevin in Pennsylvania to get Golem and Gengar. My Golem's just the best. Earthquake you into the ground. And I also love Rapidash. When I saw a Ponyta in the wild, I was like, oh, I gotta have a Rapidash right away. I totally forgot, like, when I wanted a fire type for my team, I wasn't exactly sure who I was gonna decide to get. Then I saw a wild Ponyta, I was like, oh, duh. Because as fellow YouTuber Dookie Shed once described, Rapidash is a sexy beast. I get around Kanto by riding on my Rapidash. Again, you don't have a bike in this game like Sun and Moon. You get around on Pokemon, and the great thing in this game is that some Pokemon you own, you can ride on, you can get around. Like, you're either a Tauros, or a Persian, or an Arcanine. I actually had an Arcanine for a while before I caught my Ponyta, and now I ride around on Rapidash, and it's awesome. So yeah, that's a big plus in this game. Another pretty big plus in this game is that it can connect to Pokemon Go on your phone, which, let's be honest, it was popular for a good long while when it came out, and now only the hardcore Pokemon fans still play it. I'll admit, I still play it sometimes, and I was able to transfer a lot of my Pokemon from Pokemon Go into to my Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu game. I'll admit, I use that tactic a lot to complete my Pokedex. You don't get this function until you get to Fuchsia City, which is a good ways into the story of the game. So when I started on my journey, I was excited and also a little impatient because I was like, come on, I want to see this feature. But once I got there, it was pretty cool. However, let's talk about the thing that I despise the most about this game, and that is the catching system. Okay, so in the previous Pokemon games, every single one of them, you would train your team by going out in the wild and fighting wild Pokemon, and your team would build up experience, you know, it's a solid system. In this game, they do away with the whole battling aspect of training, and now whenever you bump into a wild Pokemon, what do you do? Same thing in Pokemon Go. You just throw Pokeballs at them and try to catch them. Not only do I find that kind of absurd, but that's not even the worst part. When you're playing it on a home console, you have to use your controller and you have to throw the Pokeball like this. And I don't know what's wrong with like the motion sensor or whatever, but it doesn't get it perfect a lot. Like I'll be throwing it completely straight and the ball will go like way to the left or to the right. I'll just be like, wait, I didn't throw it that way, damn it, I just wasted another ball. And some other times like the Pokemon will be just sitting there, they do this in Pokemon Go as well, where like you'll throw a ball and right as it's about to hit it, the Pokemon will like block it off or something. That just leaves me going like, come on, just catch a stupid thing already. It's frustrating, what can I say? Best way to catch Pokemon is actually when you're playing it portable, because then you can actually move it around and just hit the button and it'll throw the ball and it'll catch most of the time, if you have good aim that is. What I like about the wild Pokemon though is that you can actually see them roaming around in the wild. I really love that actually. Not only is it a nice touch that just looks really cool, but that also gives you an out. If you want to avoid a wild Pokemon battle on your way to the next part of the story, you can totally do that, which I did a lot. I'm like, come on, okay, I don't want to be held behind in the story, I want to see the story progress. But then the other side of that is that it makes battles a lot harder 
I actually think that's a good thing. In Pokemon Moon and also Ultra Moon, I thought the battles were way too easy. And I was like, come on, give me a challenge. So all right, the battles were actually pretty hard in this game because I did not train a lot. So I lost some battles here and there. I mean, that being said, I beat the game a few days ago. I've been playing post game and there's not a lot to do, but there's some good things to do. I went and caught the legendary Zapdos is a bitch. Oh my God. I caught Articuno using a couple of Ultra Balls. I caught Moltres using a couple of Ultra Balls. Zapdos? Oh my god, it was so annoying. And just like in Pokemon Moon, the fact that it was frustrating is a positive. Zapdos was moving around so fast and I used Ultra Ball after Ultra Ball after Ultra Ball. Ah! When I eventually did catch it, I was like, you. Mewtwo is pretty difficult too. You do have to fight him first. He's level 70 when you first see him. First time I fought him, he psychic my team into the dirt. So I trained some more and my Pokemon got stronger and next time I saw him, I caught him. So props to this game for providing a bit more of a challenge this time around. However, here's another big problem I have with this game. Since it is, you know, our first Pokemon game for a home console, I don't know about you, but I was expecting like a few different regions featured. I don't know, maybe do like Kanto and Johto or maybe Hoenn in there as well. But no, this game is straight up confined to the world of red, blue, and yellow. So much so that Pokemon that you know can evolve at this point, they don't in this game. Like my Magneton, for example. I've had Magnezones in my party for Ultra Moon, Regular Moon, and Alpha Sapphire. Magnezones become one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. In this game, I have a Magneton, it's still really powerful. It just kind of bothers me a little bit that I can't evolve it into a Magnezone. But all gripes aside, I'm still completely addicted to this game. I'm still playing post-game. It's fun to play online too. I battled my friend Kevin and we're both pretty evenly matched. I won one match and he won the next one and it was fun as hell. I do still have yet to go up against Red. I know he's in this game, but I haven't gotten to him yet, but I wanted to get this video up before the end of the month. I met Green though. She's a new character and that was a fun match. I'm still completing my decks. I'm not going to go out and get that Pokeball Plus. I'm not going to spend $30 just so I can get Mew. And that whole Meltan thing, I'm not sure sure how to get him. I think it has something to do with Pokemon Go, but I've tried and I still haven't seen him yet. I don't know, it's weird. And the music, the music in this game is absolutely great. Like in all Pokemon remake games, it's the same music from the original, but done better. I swear to god, it sounds like a real orchestra performing the music you know from Red, Blue, and Yellow, or Fire, Red, and Leaf Green. I don't know if it is a real orchestra. If it's not, then it's the most realistic MIDI I've ever heard. I would not be surprised, though, if they actually did use a real orchestra to record the tracks in this game, because the music is so good. Even when you're in Pokemon Go Park, it's like an orchestra is playing the music from Pokemon Go. It's awesome. So in the end, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu is still a fun, solid, addicting Pokemon game, but it's not perfect. It left some things to be desired. I can't stand the catching system at all. I hate it and some other mechanics in the game could have used some polishing out, but the graphics are really good. I love riding around on my Rapidash. The music is fantastic. The story's still good. Of course, if you're a Pokemon fan, then you probably already have this game. If you're not, then this is a great introduction to the franchise. Pick it up, check it out if you have a Switch, or play your friend's copy. So have you played Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee? Are you still playing it now? What are your thoughts on it? And who's on your team? Whatever your answer is to any of those questions, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.